Um, another trend that is really popular right now is really people being mindful of skincare and that fresh skin. There's some different terms that are really, um, you know, kind of out there. There's the glass skin trend, the dolphin skin trend. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the VIP Collective. Today, we are sitting with Brittany Gray, who is the owner and founder of Fancy Face. Welcome back, Brittany Gray. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I am so excited to see you again. It has been almost a year and a half since you yeah. graced us with your presence in the last podcast. So crazy. And it's time crazy has flown. How, it's crazy how <laughs> time flies. Yeah, a lot so, has changed. <laughs> a lot has changed. And we're yes. going to talk about a few different things today. So for anyone who is not familiar, you can check out Brittany's episode on season one, episode 12 of the VIP Collective, which is on our website. Uh, Brittany, Brittany is the owner and founder of Fancy Face, which is a luxury hair and beauty service across Canada. Mm -hmm. So today we're talking about a few different things. We're going to lighten up the topics. We're going to talk a little bit about spring trends yes. that are happening in makeup and also some bridal trends. I think this will be really interesting for anyone who's just gotten engaged yes. or just anyone listening who wants to know what's coming up in spring when it comes to makeup. Love so it. before we get into it, let's talk a little bit about obviously how are you and <laughs> how have you been through the business world as mm -hmm. we are now almost a year into COVID? Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, with all things considered, I think we're doing and I'm doing um, as well as anybody can really do during this time. I uh, obviously the, the bridal side of our business, we usually do around 500, 500 weddings a year, both in Toronto and Vancouver. Wow. Um, and that since the pandemic started has come to a complete halt. Um, and we were really fortunate that prior to the pandemic happening, I had started a beauty cosmetic line within Fancy Face. Uh, and honestly, I feel when I think back on that, I just feel tremendously grateful because we were our, our, our um, wonderful supporters were really ready for us to launch something like that. And that has truly carried us through this time. Um, and we're so grateful that we were able to um, develop and launch um, around 50 SKUs. And wow. it, um, it, it's ignited a whole new life to our brand. And, and the product side of the business has really just given us so much joy and allowed us to not only work with brides and brides-to-be um, and bridesmaids and everybody in that arena, but also the everyday woman. Um, and of, you know, multi-generation. So it's really broadened our scope quite a bit and um, really just excites me beyond belief. Well, you're doing a fantastic job on social media because I feel like, first of all, I've been able to tune in and watch. And if anyone is listening and is not following Brittany on social media, please make sure you're following Fancy <laughs> Brittany because not only are you giving us your morning routine, but you're making sure to educate. So you're bringing a lot of education, a lot of value to anyone yes. who, especially now, like yeah. we've been given in a sense, this gift of time where of we can actually start learning how to properly do our makeup and things like that. And I know that I personally yeah. <laughs> need a little bit of help. So yeah. I really like that of what you've done. Thank you. The edu educational piece is so huge for me because I think that so often, you know, we look at another person and we think, wow, they look so refreshed and beautiful and gorgeous. And how do they do it? And it was a mystery for so long. Um, and it wasn't broken down in simple set steps with simplistic products that um, can allow you to really achieve that aesthetic. Uh, and so we've had a lot of fun just simplifying the beauty routine and not overwhelming consumers with a million options. Um, and it, it, it's been, it's been a phenomenal journey so far and we uh, very much intend to keep going with that. Well, congratulations on your pivot because I think you. in the industry, it just becomes one of these things where we really need to look at other avenues. And it also gives yes. you that new creative, feeling of, okay, how are we get now going to market this product and, yeah. you know, keep in yeah. touch, keep in touch with our community. So, of course. you know, thinking of it in that light. So yeah. let's jump in and talk a little bit about trends. Yes. <laughs> so, so spring trends first or bridal yes. trends? Let's, let's start with spring and then we'll okay. move into bridal. Okay. So spring, obviously the pandemic has really indicated what these trends are. There was like the pre COVID runways that, you know, we took a lot of, um, 
you know, inspiration from. But I think, I think over the course of the last year, things have just really changed in terms of what women want on their face. When it comes to um, some fun trends, color is making a comeback on the eyes. I think the whole notion of just continuing to play up the eyes, especially with mask wearing, um, we're seeing a lot of, believe it or not, and it's not necessarily something that I love, but we're seeing a resurgence of color. Um, so like the blues, the purples, um, and we're seeing that in a wash of color on the lid of the eyes. We're seeing that in a bold liner. We're seeing that in a fun colored mascara. In terms of the color with it, like blues, purple, there's so much variety there. Uh, but I think what's nice about that, that trend in particular is you can take that idea and then think of what makes you feel comfortable. So for me, I love that kind of like garnet shade, uh, almost like that wine tone purple shade. And I'll mm. play with that as like a winged liner to kind of adopt that trend, but make it feel my own. Um, another trend that is really popular right now is really people being mindful of skincare and that fresh skin. There's some different terms that are really, um, you know, kind of out there. There's the glass skin trend, the dolphin skin trend. <laughs> they're, oh. It's just really bizarre, the names that they're coming out with. But um, the moral of the story is fresh skin and letting your skin really shine. So th the whole matte skin trend that was, you know, of the past is not coming back. Sometimes we see these things coming back, but um, you know, dewy fresh skin is, is really remaining in spring 2021. Uh, we're also seeing some nostalgic trends coming back to like the early 2000s with the feathery brow and kind of like that brown toned lipstick. What I would say is different about it for spring 2021 is just keeping them really soft in color. So not um, a deep, dark brown shade on the lips, more of like a, a very soft, neutral shade that feels very wearable. Also, we're, we're seeing a, a resurgence of like the 90s as well with the, the matte colors on the eyes too um, and the matte lips, but still that fresh skin. Um, and then the only other thing that I can say is really popular right now is sky high lashes. So kind of letting go of the semi-permanent lash extensions that had such a moment. I think a lot of women are really trying to get back to making their natural state as beautiful as possible with taking care of their skin, taking care of their lashes, and then doing things like maybe a lash lift. Um, and also, you know, doing that at home facial um, to really make the skin shine and look, you know, dewy and gorgeous. So, um, and on our blog, actually, we, we've done some really, really fun at home um, masks that you can make just, just mm -hmm. from things that are in your kitchen. So little things like that are, are super tr trendy for spring in the um, kind of like everyday wearable world. Is a lash lift something that someone can do to themselves or is this something through? No, I wouldn't recommend it yourself. You want to go to, um, you know, somewhere where you've read the reviews, like a beauty studio, um, and make sure that they're, they're, they're doing their treatment po process carefully. Because if you go to someone that leaves the, the um, formula on too long, it can actually dry out your lashes. Uh, it's also around your eyes. You want to be really careful that, you know, it doesn't get into your eyes. So definitely do your research in that department. But I'm seeing a lot of lash lifts and a lot of lash tints as well. So it's really heavily, obviously, focused on eyes, on yes. brows. One, one point that I didn't bring up that is also quite trendy for spring 2021 are lip stains again. Hmm. So something that has a lot of stamina underneath your mask that you can put on, maybe blot, put on again, maybe do a quick blot again, and it, it's, that stain is going to stay for the day then you put on your mask and you don't have to worry about any shifting and moving. Hmm. Um, people aren't really into that, you know, long wear liquid lipstick anymore. It's too heavy and cakey underneath the mask, even though it might not budge. They want something that feels a little bit more natural again. Um, and that again, has that stamina throughout the day. Well, I'm definitely finding anytime I leave the house now. So a couple walks a day to the grocery yeah. store, like yeah. it's, the makeup is going on fully and there, there are days no one sees me at all, but I will yeah. still apply makeup yeah. because just the, even the feeling of getting mm -hmm. up, getting ready, yeah. it makes you feel a little bit more productive, but yeah, it's just, uh, it's putting yourself, you know, getting yourself ready. Today. Well, that's actually a great point. And that the, one of the sort of, um, 
real mottos that we have at Fancy Face is that fancy is a feeling. So it's the whole idea that, you know, none of us are really going anywhere. Nobody is seeing us other than if we might have to work on social media. Um, but, but for me personally, what's got me through this pandemic is making that choice and recognizing that makeup brings me joy. And that if I spend that time on that self-care, it just makes a world of difference in terms of how I feel, how I tackle the day, how I am with my husband, how I am with my kids. Mm -hmm. um, and I just feel empowered. So that is really like a huge message for us at Fancy Faces. It's, it's so much more than just a superficial thing that we do. It's a level of confidence that you get, exactly. right? Yeah, especially especially now if we are just wearing a mask and we go out and we, and so many times it's it's natural for me to smile at people when I see them and it, yeah. so I'm no, smiling. No, no. And then, <laughs> I'm really working on my smize. So yes, no, that yeah, you so, must involve the eyes in your yeah, smile, <laughs> so that people know I'm there with you. I'm you know I'm yeah. trying to say hello, but yeah. Times yeah. are a little unusual, but they are. But I um, think you can still feel it behind a mask. For sure. Yeah. Smizing. It's all in the smizing. Yeah. yeah. Now, what about bridal trends? Let's talk yes. about this because we're moving from what used to be big and bold into yes. more of a new intimate setting. Mm -hmm. So does that mean people go a little bit more natural or do they step it up the other way and do they go statement for their smaller mm -hmm. wedding? I genuinely think that this time that we've spent being in lockdown is really going to affect the choices that brides make when it comes to their look. I think people have gotten to a place, like I've mentioned, where they're taking better care of themselves, their skin. Um, and I really do think that the brides are going to go more towards a more naturalistic look on the face. And then when it comes to the eyes, I think there's still going to be that you know, kind of winged out liner, um, maybe not with a black liner, but more of like those sort of like rich, rich brown tones um, that will define the eyes in a soft way, almost like a blown out way. And I, I definitely think that in the lash department, for so many years, women wanted those big, full mink lashes. I think that that's going to take a bit, bit of a backseat um, moving into 2021. I think people are still going to do a false lash. I always recommend a fal false lash to brides for, for video and also mm -hmm. photography. It makes a huge difference. But just shortening maybe the length of them, making them perhaps look like they could be your lashes, but definitely playing up that like sexier eye is definitely going to be a thing with that monochromatic makeup, I think overall, um, that gives you that natural feel, but still also is sexy and glamorous at the same time. And still gives you that pop. For a bride, it's always really important to remain timeless. And we always coach our brides too, that you want to look back on those photos in 10, 20 years from now and say, I made a good decision that day. And I even, I got married five years ago and I look back and I went with very like neutral monochromatic tones and there's not a regret there when it comes to my makeup. I also didn't wear too much makeup, even being a makeup artist. I went a little bit softer, a little bit more natural. Um, and, I, and I genuinely feel like that was a good decision. So I think that you know, using those insights and, and coaching our bride in that direction um, will really you know, um, just make them happy in the long run. Love it. And so yeah. what do you think when it comes shifting a little bit to the hair to complement yeah the eyes and the face and the makeup, what do you think is going to be a little, are we going to go more softer with that as well? Or what are you seeing trend wise with hair? I think it's going to remain a trend to keep the hair down. Um, but I think there's going to be more, less of an overdone, like sprayed kind of curled look mm -hmm. and more of a, not that that was ever really our thing, but I think it's going to be more of that blown out effect with the hair. So very loose, kind of like, um, just sexy blown out kind of look, not overdone, not like they took um, a, a wand or a curling iron to it. So more of just that really like flowing, you know, just voluptuous hair, I guess you could say. I had seen, uh, you had posted a messy bun photo on yes. your Instagram recently. And I was yeah. like, oh, I love that. And yeah. I, fe I feel like just that kind of that looseness is, yeah. almost, it almost, is an indicator of how we need to feel and be yeah. in the coming in the coming months because yeah. we don't necessarily know what's going to happen so everything's kind of going with the flow so i think that that's a really great way to put the trend overall um, going yeah. with the flow going going with the flow 
and not overdoing it. Um, yeah, I think I, I, I certainly don't think that people are going to, you know, um, once the gates open, come out and want to, you know, really make a crazy statement with their hair and makeup. I think it's still going to be subdued, a little bit muted, classy, um, and certainly not overdone. Do you typically recommend that they have a few photos that they can reference that they like when they always so I, I I find it really helpful when a bride narrows it down to about three or four photos when it comes to the makeup or hair um, and and really specifying what they like about each shot so I love the eyes in this pic I love the skin in this pic this hair is stunning so really narrowing it down and I always recommend pushing the trial a lot closer to the wedding than most may think. Um, there's whole, this whole idea in the bridal world, you have to do a wedding trial a year or two, mm. eight or six months in advance. I think it's really the sweet spot, the su sweet spot is two months in advance because at that point you really ironed out all the kinks, you know, and, and you know exactly what you're going for. I think the bride that you think you might be a year before is much different than the bride a couple months before the wedding. And also your skin may change within that time frame, totally. depending on your and diet. Also the tone of your skin might change depending on summer, you know, winter. Yeah. So yeah. Your, tri your trial may be more true the closer you are to your wedding. I think so. And, and, and your hair color too is a, is a huge part that, that does often change as you get closer to. So um, definitely smart to do it closer to. Amazing. Well, that was going to be my next question, which was when you are booking hair and makeup. Yeah now as we navigate through this because everything's mm -hmm. obviously you know a little bit up in the air what yeah. do you recommend if people are now just engaged past um valentine's day and they're like okay we need to hit the ground running do they yeah. reach out at this point do they wait yeah. uh i'm most definitely when it comes to fancy face uh it is very smart to book it right after you book your date in your venue um, I know that there's a lot of people that really want to be a fancy face bride, but they maybe hold out too long. We actually have some people too that book us before they're even engaged because mm -hmm. they know that we get booked up. So um, when it comes to hair and makeup, if, it, if it's really important to you and um, you want to be in a certain person's hands, then most definitely book sooner than later and give ample time. Um, because it breaks our heart when, hearts when we have to turn away people that would love to be one of our brides, but unfortunately just the, the, the timing doesn't work in terms of when they let us know. Yeah. We feel yeah. the same as well. We get inquiries yes. for, you know, 2022 and it, especially being boutique and we offer, you know, yeah. we take on smaller or, um, less amount of weddings on a, in a year. And so it yes. breaks my heart, you know, when someone does come in and they they really appreciate the work and they want to yeah. work with you, but then the date is already booked. So yes. yeah. Or yeah. the sooner the better, essentially. The sooner the better. Yeah. And hair and makeup is one of those things that you'd think you could leave a little bit longer um, before booking, but it's, it's, I think it's really changed now. I think it's probably a good idea to be doing the trials just before the wedding as well. It's in this case and in this climate, it gives mm -hmm. you more opportunity to get closer with your couple yeah. or your bride before, or just before the wedding date. Yeah. And the other thing that's really nice is when people book with us, um, we actually, so if they put down their deposit and then they wait to do their trial until closer to, we guarantee their happiness. So even if they are placed with two artists that they aren't absolutely loving, mm -hmm. we will place them again with another two artists to try and, and mm -hmm. at complimentary mm -hmm. basically until they nail it. So there's that assurance that, you know, you don't have to worry about, um, finding a good fit because finding the right artist for you really is kind of like dating too. You have to find right. a person that you want in your personal space on that day. That's, that's key. I also feel like that with videographer too, mm -hmm. you know, you really have to want that person near you all day. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe not with hair and makeup as much all day, but you certainly want, it's, it's the first point of contact that morning. Um, so finding a really good energetic fit is key too. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely three to four to even five, maybe even six hours that are dedicated with your makeup artist in the morning. Yeah. And, you know, to kind of have that vibe and feel each other out ahead of time is very important. So that's, yeah, that's amazing. And how is the rosé room? Because oh. <laughs> I miss it. I've been down there and I haven't been down there since obviously since COVID, but yeah. Yeah. You know what? It's just been so nice to have the space, even though our doors have been closed and it was, perhaps you could say bad timing in terms of when we opened our store. 
uh, it's been such a beautiful thing to be able to be in the space that really speaks to who we are mm -hmm. um, and allows us to do social from here. And it's an ultra feminine space. So when I come here, I just, I feel, I just, I just feel good, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm super grateful for the space and I'm also so excited to open our doors again, um, both for makeup lessons, trials, and then also for people to come and shop our products as well. So fingers crossed we get there someday. I know, I'm so excited for the spring months and the summer months to start making their way towards us so that we can, you know, start being together 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 again in a sense i know and so i know that you mentioned you had something i did want to ask you about skincare now i, I know sure. you mentioned you had something on the blog in regards to skincare but what's that's your, more of like fun at home stuff yeah. fun at home but what's your yeah. holy grail like what's your golden rule of skincare <laughs> my golden rule is to take care of your skin really i mean yeah. there's a lot of women um and now that i am I'm 35 now, I've seen girls that I've gone to high school with, you know, um, not take care of their skin. And, and it is one of those things that actually does show. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if you're trying to preserve um, your youth, really, like when it comes to your skin, you have to, you have to invest in it and you have to spend that time. Not that you have to spend a lot of dollars on the products. You can find great you know, vegan products that have wonderful ingredients that aren't going to break the bank, but you need to be enlisting in things like a serum, a moisturizer. Um, I love face oils. I think there's a stigma around them for people that have oily skin, but delve into the world of face oils because they nourish the skin in such a beautiful way. Um, and, and I really do, um, I spend probably a good 10 minutes on my skincare morning and night. Um, and focusing on eye creams, making sure that you're using an eye cream. I cannot live without our supermodel lip bath. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's basically like a lip mask treatment that I Ooh. put put on before I go to bed. And I also put it on, this is how it looks. This is my personal That's one. So beautiful. it's beautiful. Yeah. And this one's fun because it has a little, um, oh, wand, cool. so you don't have to dip your finger in. Amazing. Especially, yeah, especially now. <laughs> yeah. So this is like my Holy grail fancy face product that I cannot live without. And then, you know, pampering yourself in little ways. Like we actually created our, um, Stardust gel under love eye those. masks for our brides, but mm -hmm. I love these just as an everyday girl, putting them on, taking them out of the fridge, um, putting them on and really giving myself like a deep treatment under the eyes so that, you know, you're preventing any sort of um, fine lines or wrinkles from developing. It's, it's skincare for the most part should be preventative. Mm -hmm. Even if you have fine lines and wrinkles, you, you like you still have to prevent from future ones that, you know, might pop up if you don't take care of your skin. If you don't care about those kinds of things, all the power to you. But if you're looking to, you know, um, not do things like, you know, let's just say Botox or those kinds of things to, to kind of get rid of those things, you certainly want to take care of your skin. Mm -hmm. Um, and we all are on, you know, we're all in different places in terms of, of how much that matters to us. But for those that, that, that certainly do want to look and feel great as they get older, skincare is like top for me. It's really interesting because in the present moment, and I think this probably happens in a lot of different avenues just in life, but when it comes to your present moment, you may overlook it, but then eventually, you know, you wake up one morning and you're like, oh, I should have done that. Or what would the older you tell the younger you? And it's like, take care of your skin so that you're when skin. you're in your, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, mm -hmm. you'll be glad that you did when yeah. you're in your 20s and 30s for sure. Yeah. And I was fortunate to have a mother that always taught me the importance of taking care of my skin. I also loved, I grew up watching her with her beauty routine and I was just kind of like in awe of it growing up. So I adopted that because it was a passion of mine. Um, but for those that, you know, it's not necessarily a passion, I, but I, I think it's important for every woman and every person really to do, to do it. Have you adopted a silk pillowcase yet? You know what? I, I tried the silk pillowcase because I actually have really fine hair and I know that that helps with breakage when you're sleeping as well. And it helps with creasing, um, on your face and all of those things as well. Also, you know, um, fine lines and all of that, but I, I, I don't sleep well on them. No? I love, I love my just normal, you know, 
your pillow. Bed <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, regular bed sheet. Yeah, I do have a silk pillowcase, and I absolutely love it. Do you uh, really? I do. I love it, and it also is. It's it has a cool feeling to it when you first lay your right. head down, right? So then yeah. there's that comfort as well, which is kind of like feels a little bit refreshing. But yeah, yeah. This I is need a, to give it another try. I don't mind it. <laughs> you love it's it. Okay, I, I do. <laughs> Now, just because I want to pivot into talking a little bit about, we've talked about skincare, what about self-care? So what have you adopted over, just before we, before I let you go, what have yeah. you adopted over uh, since 2020 that mm -hmm. has kind of stuck with you to help yeah. with your lifestyle or change your lifestyle? Well, um, so I was always an avid journaler growing mm -hmm. up. Uh, I would write pages and pages and pages in my journal. I have I actually have a box of probably 20 journals that are just filled with all of my thoughts and feelings. Cool. And that helped me, especially being coming from being in the performing arts. I mean, I'm very artistic and just in my nature. So I felt like that was just an outlet for me to get all of that out. Um, however, when I met my husband, Mark, and I had kids and it all went down the drain because I used to do all of that when I was alone in my bedroom and it just felt comforting to write. Um, however, I have now started adopting that as well with the five minute journal. I don't have the time I used to have to write all those pages, but um, I write that every morning when I wake up. Uh, I write what, what, what I'm grateful for. And that, that's really huge in terms of self-care for me because when I'm mindful of what I'm grateful for, I have a better day um, when I'm in that positive space. Um, the other thing that I, I love to do, I, I, in a previous life, was a professional dancer as well. And so finding um, something that I love fitness-wise has always been really challenging for me post-dancing. So I actually took up the Melissa Wood Health um, app, which is a, basically a yoga and Pilates focused um, using your own body weight kind of movement. So they're short workouts. They're like 10 to 20 minute workouts. Um, and you can do them on your yoga mat at home. I love that. Um, and then like obviously things like reading, meditation. I love crystals and um, playing with different crystals in terms of using them with meditation. So I would say all of those things really help me. There's more, but we could be here forever um, <laughs> talking about them. But I, the main point is that self-care is a top priority to me, even though it's taken a back seat the past five years since I've had children. But do you feel like it came forefront a little bit more since the beginning the of COVID? Yeah. I, here's the thing. I, I do and I don't because I was kind of in fight or flight mode when all of this started. I, if I'm truthful... Um, I had, I think I've, I've recently got back to the self-care and understanding its importance, but for the first year of the pandemic, it was, it was scary. And I felt like every waking second, I either had to work or I needed to be with my family and take care of them. And so the self-care was just at the bottom of the list if it, and it shouldn't have been, but it was. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, I think it was just, it's one of these, un, like, we've never seen anything like this before. And so, yeah. of course, everyone was just kind of, you know, last March, I can remember, like, it was, it felt, it was very, um, it made you panic a little bit. It did, yeah. You just didn't know what was next. And yeah. um, so I think everyone kind of went through that stage. And I think the more we go through it, we're just trying to find ways to, to break out of, you know, our yeah. old shell and develop something new, potentially. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, before I let you go, uh, where can people find you? So you can find us at fancyface.ca is the first place. Um, and then you can also find us at Fancy Face Inc. on Instagram and Twitter um, and Facebook as well, Fancy Face Inc. And um, TikTok. And TikTok. And TikTok. We've, we're <laughs> trying the whole TikTok thing. I don't know. I don't know. It's not my <laughs> favorite. My mom's a huge fan of TikTok, but I personally am just trying to get used to it, but I know it's an important place to be. Mm -hmm. And, but Instagram is my jam. I love Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're fantastic at it. And like I said earlier in the episode, if you're not following Brittany yet, please head over and do so because she will light up your life. Oh, thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking your time to sit in and fill our, fill our audience in on what they should oh. know moving into the spring. So oh, it's an honor. To you again on site soon in 2021. Yeah, I know. I would love I'm going to, I'm going to one day give you a very big hug at a wedding. I know. Because I, I can. I know. <laughs> Not an illegal hug, a real yeah, hug. A real hug. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm it. excited for that. Okay, thanks, Brittany. We'll see you soon.